Hello my friends, it is Jessica from Three Rivers Homestead and I'm back with another video during the 2023 Three Rivers Challenge. This is the pantry challenge that I do every January and February. And in this week's video, I'm gonna focus on using up freeze-dried food. We freeze-dried quite a bit of vegetables from the garden last year and it is my goal to try to use up as many as possible. So we are gonna start with some freeze-dried squash. Uh, this is zucchini and tomato powder. I powdered this up together, and I'm gonna add this to some ground beef to make some meatballs. It's just a great way, the freeze-dried powder will kind of soak up some of that grease. And we're gonna also add some Italian seasoning. Then, of course, we need some eggs here to kind of bind the meatballs together and then we'll salt it really well. So like I said, the freeze-dried powder is great to add to different meats. It's great for meatloaves. You can even add it to your hamburgers, things like that. It adds a little bit of extra vegetable that you can kind of hide in there for kids that are picky eaters. And it also, because that freeze-dried powder rehydrates through the cooking process, it kind of helps pull some of that grease and extra moisture out of the meat so that it, it isn't quite so greasy. So this worked out great, and like I said, I have some work to do to use up a lot of these powders that I just haven't been intentional about using because I've been focusing on using canned foods and frozen foods instead. We're going to pour, um, speaking of canned foods, some canned tomato sauce on top of that and get it baking in the oven. And in the meantime, I need to make some garlic bread. So these are the cubes of frozen garlic puree. I showed this a few videos ago. I freeze these cubes in olive oil so that when they melt, it's great for spreading on garlic toast. So I just toasted some homemade bread here. I've got my helpers keeping me company. And then because that garlic puree is already in the oil, we can spread it right on the toast. And since we can't have butter in our house, this is how we make our garlic bread. And my children love garlic. We just add a little salt on top of there. And here is our meal. We have our meatballs with that hidden veggie powder, garlic toast, some spaghetti noodles, and then I made a cake that little Levi here wants to dig into. <laughs> we didn't really have a reason to make a cake on this particular day, but the kids wanted one, so I made one. And there's a little guy's serving size. We got a big boy's serving size, and we are going to sit down and have a family dinner. As you guys know, Adam works outside of the home, so we don't sit down at the table to have family dinner every um, meal, but we try to do it for dinner as many nights of the week as possible. And this is a very special time for our family. And the kids enjoyed their cake for absolutely no reason on that day. It was just a nice treat. All right, now we are gonna move on to another meal using some freeze-dried powder and um, I'm just having to kind of get cure, uh, creative here on ways to use it up so that we had a lunch on this day that was just going to be a bunch of snacks and I decided to make some crackers. So I have my flour, I'm adding some yeast to the flour and also a little bit of baking soda. I'll post this exact uh, recipe in the description of this video. And then we add some salt to our crackers and finally we are going to add some freeze-dried powders and I chose on this particular day to add beet powder because it turns it a lovely color. The kids enjoy the novelty of the pink and I also added freeze-dried shredded carrots. We're just going to mix that up. I didn't quite have it the pink color that I wanted so I'm going to end up adding a little bit of extra beetroot powder. This is great for turning things pink in your baking without having to use artificial food dyes. I can't recommend freeze drying and powdering up beets enough. Add a little bit of water, add some olive oil, and then we're just gonna mix this together. And I have to, because I added the extra powder with the vegetables in amounts that you know I didn't necessarily measure, I'm going to have to add a little bit of extra water just to get it to the right texture and really work that in there with my hands. So I doubled my cracker recipe on this particular day and tried to fit it all on one cookie sheet. And I kind of regret that because my crackers ended up a little thicker than I would normally have them. Um, so your goal here is to really try to get this as thin as possible so that your crackers get extra crispy. And you really have to work with it. The dough is rather tough. 
So this is how you're going to get your mom in the kitchen arm workout. <laughs> but um, eventually you can get it nice and flat. And then what I like to do is use a pizza cutter to cut my crackers into little you know, shapes that I prefer them. And then I get out a fork and poke my holes in the top of each cracker. And then they're ready to bake in the oven. So once again, that recipe will be in the description. Now with our crackers, I'm going to make some hummus. I have some tahini to use up that's in the fridge. We have a jar here of home canned garbanzo beans, some garlic cloves, some freeze dried lemons. This is what we're gonna use up today and some salt. So let's go ahead and make some hummus. Here's a little zero waste tip for you. When you are draining out your beans, the water from that is called aquafaba and it can be used as an egg white replacer. We never throw away this bean juice. We will save it and then we can um, use it in things like meringues and other things that you would use uh, whipped egg whites in. And I'm gonna show you after this meal how we're gonna use this. So we're gonna set that juice aside and not throw it out and use it later on. Now let's get back to our hummus, dumping my garbanzo beans into the blender here. And then to that, we are gonna add our garlic and I'm just eyeballing it here. We're gonna add our tahini. And then normally in hummus, you would add lemon juice and I didn't have the foresight to thaw lemon juice the night before because you know we keep ours frozen in the freezer and so I am taking these slices of freeze-dried lemons that I have on the pantry shelves and I'm just pulling out the center part of it kind of powdering it up and that will serve the same purpose as the lemon juice does in our hummus and this is a great way to use up some of these lemon slices that I preserved last year these are actually from 2022 and I have not done a good job of using them up so trying to be intentional now about finding ways to use them and the hummus is perfect. Just need to add some salt and then we'll get this all blended up and then we will have hummus. It's that easy. You can add whatever you want to your hummus, roasted red pepper, you know, lots of different ways to make hummus with different flavors. We're just doing regular plain old garlic hummus on this day, but I do like to kind of garnish the top. So I'm gonna grab some paprika and there we go. And meanwhile, our crackers are baking and I have a minute while they're baking to just do some schoolwork with the kids. I always enjoy it when my kids join me at the counter. I'm kind of keeping an eye on this beef broth that I have boiling, but it's always fun when I can look over and see the children working together on their school or working independently and I can kind of help them while I get my kitchen work done. There we go. Our crackers are all done. As I mentioned, they turned out a little thicker than normal, but the kids absolutely love them. Gobbled up the whole plate. They were still crispy enough, and they just dipped those into our hummus that we made here, and that worked out wonderfully. This is kind of a snacky lunch. I also made some tuna salad. We have lots of tuna in storage that we need to use, and I grabbed some rice cakes that I had forgotten about that I had up above the fridge just some various pickled relishes I need to use, and then some quarts of canned peaches and pears. And this was a really simple lunch um, on this particular day, and the kids loved it. So let's talk about that bean juice or aquafaba that I just mentioned. We are gonna use it on this particular day to make a vegan chocolate mousse. So we have our aquafaba, we have some cream of tartar, I have some chocolate chips, and I have some coconut oil. The first thing I'm gonna do is take my chocolate chips and coconut oil and put them on a double boiler and let them kind of melt down. And then I'm taking that bean juice aquafaba, adding the cream of tartar, and then I'm gonna whip it up just like you would egg whites. When you whip this together, it will end up in stiff peaks. And remember, you can use this anywhere that you would use whipped egg whites. And you can freeze that aquafaba and collect it until you have enough for whatever recipe you need. This is a great option if you know someone who's vegan and you need to make a dessert for them. This is a wonderful option. So now that our chocolate mixture here is all melted, we're just going to fold that in to our whipped bean juice. <laughs> and we're going to end up with a really delicious dairy-free chocolate mousse for my children. 
and I'm just portioning that out into seven little half pint jars. It's not a lot, but it will be a nice little treat. So like I said, I could freeze um, the aquafaba from one batch of beans, and then when I get enough to make a, a larger batch, I can pull that out of the freezer and make more, but we're just doing little tiny jars for the kids as an addition to a meal here in the future, and they really enjoyed that. Gotta get my lids on them, and did you guys know that peanut butter or nut butter lids and some mayonnaise lids can actually be saved and repurposed. They fit on your narrow mouth canning jars. So remember to save those and not throw them away. So that chocolate mousse sat in the fridge overnight and the next morning you can see we have a lovely mousse texture and the kids are gonna absolutely love this. I'm going to make some coconut whipped cream. I have a whipped cream dispenser and I just add canned coconut cream to it with a little powdered sugar if I wanna sweeten it, and we get whipped cream that is dairy-free and safe for my child with an anaphylactic dairy allergy. And so I just figured we would fill the jars the rest of the way with some whipped cream, and the kids absolutely loved this. We decided to have it as kind of a, a little treat with a breakfast in which we were using up a bunch of leftovers. Let me show you. This is what that looked like. We're gonna get Gabe's seal of approval here. Let's see what he thinks of our vegan chocolate mousse that's using bean, <laughs> bean juice. He really liked it. He said, you can't taste beans or anything like that. It just tastes like a regular mousse. So he gets his approval. So here's that leftover breakfast I was talking about. This is some oatmeal cake I'm gonna show you later on in this video. We had some leftover steak and potatoes and the kids were just kind of picking at all of this to see what they wanted on that morning. All right, let's do another meal. I have lots of jars of these freeze-dried vegetables that I just put whole and didn't powder up in jars. So we are gonna try rehydrating them as a side dish because we are out of canned green beans. I'm gonna use um, broth to rehydrate. That'll just give extra nutrition versus using plain water. And we just got that in a pan here heated it up and that broth rehydrated these and they tasted good. It's a different texture than canned or frozen green beans. They're very soft, but not. Um, it's not a bad texture or anything. The kids ate it all up and, and we enjoyed it. We served it with some rice. We had a pork roast that I kind of shredded up. And then I had a fruit cobbler with some homegrown blackberries. And this was a quick dinner on one of our <laughs> weeknights, all just enjoying nap time. All right, let's move on to another use for freeze-dried food. I have made cinnamon rolls for you two times now throughout this pantry challenge in different ways. One time it was with just my regular recipe using cinnamon and sugar for the filling. I did it another time using home canned jelly and jam to make jelly rolls. But on this day, I decided to try using freeze-dried peaches in place of the sugar in the filling in my cinnamon rolls. And it turned out wonderful. So let me show you how I'm gonna do that. And as always, I will put the recipe in the description for you since I'm not explaining it right here. And then if you wanna make cinnamon rolls, you'll have my recipe. I love making cinnamon rolls or jelly rolls for breakfast for my kids because it's really easy to whip it up the night before and then let it rise in the fridge overnight. And then in the morning, all I have to do is pull my pan out and throw it in the, the oven for a little bit. So it's very convenient for me as a mom. And I take some time in the evening once the kids go to bed and I just enjoy baking and the, while the house is silent, it's really nice um, kind of way to unwind at the end of the day. So these are my freeze-dried peach slices, and they will just literally powder up if you crumble them. And this is gonna be our sugar. This is a little bit of a healthier alternative to cinnamon rolls and using you know, refined sugar. If I really wanted to get this powdered up finely, I would get out my food processor, my blender, and blend this down into a powder. But since the children were sleeping, I didn't wanna wake anyone up using a loud machine. So I'm just working them with my hands and any little chunks that we have will rehydrate into little peach pieces that will also be delicious in our filling. I added cinnamon and a little bit of olive oil as our fat, got that all stirred up together, and we're just gonna spread this out on our dough. 
and roll this up just like we would cinnamon rolls. As I mentioned, these will rise in the fridge overnight. And then in the morning, I baked them up and they turned out adorable. Look at these little peach cinnamon rolls. Um, the flavor was amazing. I decided to glaze them and add a little bit of that peach powder to my glaze. Gave a little extra peach flavor and the children really liked this. It kind of breaks up the monotony of having regular cinnamon rolls giving it a little bit of that, that peach flavor. So that one got the kids' approval as well. We were very happy with how those turned out. A great way to use up some of that freeze-dried stuff that I'm having to figure out how to use. I also cooked up some eggs for the big kids that needed a little bit of protein with their meal. And then I'm working on, I had some beef broth that had I had canned the day before, and the seals were all good, getting them labeled and the jars cleaned, and put up on the shelves. It's always busy here in our kitchen at Three Rivers Homestead. So let's look at another project that kept us busy this week. We have lots of apples in storage. I took you guys along. We went to Adam's grandpa's orchard last fall and we bought bushels of apples. And now some of them are storage varieties. We bought, these are cameo apples. They are great for storage. You can see they're perfect still for fresh eating, not soft at all. We also got, these are wine sap apples. They're another great storage variety, but not all apples are created equal. Some are great for storage like that, and some are not. The rest of these are Jana Golds and um, Golden Delicious, and they are better for making things like sauce. They don't store as well, and you can see they are getting wrinkly. And um, I was supposed to make sauce out of these last fall. I didn't get these for storage, but I was pregnant and never got to it. So we're saving our storage apples here for fresh eating, and we still have a bushel of those left from last October, which is wonderful. But we need to do something with the rest of these apples that were not meant for storage that are starting to kind of show signs of age. So on this particular day, I decided to turn them into some applesauce. So I'm doing this the lazy way, and all I did was wash um, each apple and then I am literally just cutting them in half and throwing them into a pot. And then what we will do later on is we will mill them, run them through a mill, and then all of the seeds and skins and things will be left behind at that point. And so this is just a really quick way for me to do this as a busy mom. Of course, when you put these on the stove, you'll need to add water to the bottom while they simmer so that they don't stick or burn. And then all day long, these sat on the stove while we went about our day and they cooked down into a delicious sauce. I'll show you what we did with that later. In the meantime, I needed to get these little boys <laughs> doing something a little less dangerous. So we got out some watercolors and they were busy painting a masterpiece versus fighting one another with, <laughs> with those superhero gloves. And I call these three my three stooges. They always keep me on my toes they are busy, busy little boys, and I absolutely love it. I love being a boy mom to these busy kids. So getting some lunch going for bread um, that we would have with our lunch and sandwiches. And then once I was done making my bread, my apples were all done cooking down. This is kind of my antique food mill. A friend, an elderly friend who no longer needed it, gave it to me, and it is perfect for making applesauce. All we have to do is scoop out the cooked apples and just kind of run them through that mill. And then as I mentioned, all of the skins and seeds and solid bits are left behind. And then what we get left with is our delicious, beautiful applesauce. And since I had added quite a bit of water to the pot on this particular day, um, the sauce was a little more runny than I like it. So I put it back into the pot on the stove to cook it down and thicken it a little bit because my kids prefer the applesauce add a little bit thicker of a texture. So just stirring that around to make sure it doesn't stick and then we can get it into jars. Now typically I can my applesauce in quart size jars because if we're having it as a side dish for a meal I will need two quarts for all of my children. But lately I've had big kids who have liked to grab a jar of applesauce as a snack and a quart is too much for them. So a pint sized jar is the perfect amount for them to grab and just open up and eat as a snack um, whenever they're hungry. So that is why I am canning these in pints on this particular day. 
And these will be wonderful shelf stable snacks for my big kids. Just doing all of our normal canning chores. Uh, the first thing I'm doing is trying to kind of even out these jars and get the appropriate headspace. And then as always something sticky like applesauce, you need to wipe all of your rims to make sure that you will have good seals and no seal failures. Speaking of seal failures, I'm using my favorite canning lids, my four jars lids. I never have seal failures with these and over a year of canning, I've only had one seal failure and it was likely due to user error. So just getting my lids on here. If you would like some canning lids, a discount, 10% off your lids, use the code in the description of this video and you can get some really good quality canning lids. I love my four jars lids. Adding a little bit of white distilled vinegar to the pot to prevent a mineral film on my jars. And then it was 15 minutes in the water bath for pints of applesauce. They all sealed perfectly. All right, now I'm gonna show you a hack for how to use leftover oatmeal. If you ever have oatmeal leftover because you made too much for your kids, don't throw it away. You can turn it into a cake. Just add some flour, add a little bit of baking powder, and I'm eyeballing it here. I don't have a recipe. I'm just doing it until I get it to the right texture. And then I'm gonna add some eggs. Obviously for a cake, you need some eggs. We're gonna add a little bit of vanilla. And then I am adding cashew milk. You can add any kind of liquid you would like. And then I'm adding a little bit of maple syrup to sweeten it. Even though the oatmeal was already sweetened, it's gonna need a little additional sweetener. We're just gonna get that all mixed together. And like I said, if it's too wet, you can add a little extra flour. Just kind of eyeball it, eyeball it until you get it to the right kind of cake-like batter texture. And then I have a greased uh, cake pan here. We're just going to pour this leftover oatmeal mixture into our cake pan, and we're going to bake it on 350 until um, the center is firmed up. And this is how I like to reuse my leftover oatmeal because I just can't seem to make the appropriate amount of oatmeal at a meal. I always either, <laughs> I always make too much. I overestimate how hungry the kids will be. And so, um, you know, we'll sometimes we'll feed it to the animals so it doesn't go to waste, but making it into a cake is an even better um, way to repurpose that. So, all right, friends, I hope you enjoyed the looking at the projects that we were up to this week. Next week, I'm excited to bring you something a little different. I'm in the middle of heavy duty garden, garden planning, and I'm going to take a break from the food videos for a little bit and show you guys my entire garden planning process because I know some of you are getting ready to start that and maybe you could find some of my little tips and tricks helpful. So that will be what I'll be coming to you with next week. But in the meantime, we are just going to enjoy a week of being together and doing all of our normal homestead work. You guys know that we're in Ohio and I once again want to let you know that we are safe, but we continue to pray for all the people in Ohio that have been affected by the pollution from the train derailment. Please keep them in your prayers, friends.